what a way to start the day. I got a chance to fly the drone over Giga Texas and then drive in on Tesla Road into the main factory and head over towards uh, trailer number seven, which is the new welcome center uh, near the uh, north part of uh, Tesla Road over near the intersection of Robotic Avenue and Tesla Road. And as you can see directly ahead of me is the cathode plant, also the dye shop and the trailers that we are heading to are off to the left in this image. So let's continue to drive over and I will uh, uh, park near the trailer and we'll get ready to go inside. Everybody, uh, I'm here for a unexpected tour of Giga Texas today. This is actually pretty cool. This is the 3rd of July 2024. So what a great way to help celebrate Independence Day for the United States. Now I'm over near the trailers that we normally see just to the north of the Tesla Road and what you can see behind me is welcome trailer number seven and uh, another cyber truck behind me it's uh, uh, another person getting a tour today but uh, anyway i uh, got invited by the director of manufacturing here at giga texas for this tour and uh, part of it is going to be uh, joined up with a friends and family tour that is offered to many uh, people within the community of tesla but in addition to that, I'm also going to get a little bit of a special tour after the original tour is over with. So what I am going to try to do is get a little bit more video of the exterior of Giga Texas as much as I possibly can and uh, show you what that looks like on the ground. And then I'm not sure how much I will be able to show or talk about from the inside. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, this is uh, quite an interesting treat for me to get this uh, opportunity. Uh, like I said, it's a bit of a surprise, but very much welcomed, and I'm excited about that. So what I'm about to do is go into Trailer 7, the Welcome Center, get checked in, and uh, then we'll see what happens after that. So anyway, I'll try to keep you informed as much as I possibly can. All right, well, I've just uh, checked in here at the Welcome Trailer. It's number seven. I got my uh, pass for the uh, tour, so uh, it should be pretty fun. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, first part of this is with the friends and family. So there's a lot of people that are checking in here now. And in just a few minutes, we'll be getting onto the shuttle bus and then heading over to most likely the West Main entrance, and then we'll go from there. So I'll keep uh, trying to document what I can. We are off. We're departing the temporary trailer and offices for Tesla, getting gone to Robotic Avenue and then proceeding over towards the main factory. And this gives you a good view of where I'm departing from, those temporary trailers and their numbers. And you'll also be able to see Giga Texas coming up on the left-hand side of the screen to give you a pretty good idea of where we are at. Now I'm going to be stopping at the intersection and I thought I would take this opportunity to show you Robotic Avenue and 
And this is the road that uh, proceeds on the east side of the parking lot. And also on the south end is where it's been extended and it goes down by the multi-level parking garage. So here's a, just a look around uh, this intersection. And let's continue to proceed towards the uh, south end of Giga Texas on Robotic Avenue. For today, I was able to sit on the right-hand side of the bus, so I've got a really good view of the factory as we drive along. However, on my 13 June video on the shareholders day, I was able to sit on the left-hand side of the bus. So I'm gonna intersperse some of that video so you can see both sides of the highway. Now this is a great view of that multi-level parking garage, the uh, water detention pond, and the old testing and calibration lot where a lot of the cyber trucks are temporarily stored while they are going through last minute checks and uh, also the old supercharger station. Now we're going to go back to today's video and we'll look back on the right hand side of the road. This is the employee parking lot. Also some charging and superchargers on this side. You can also see that steel structure being erected on the east side of casting. That's that bag house fil filtration plant. And of course a lot more of the earthwork by these receiving doors and the castings that are stored on the side. We also see those orange tubes for some cooling uh, in that area next to that east uh, secondary main entrance. And as we come to a temporary stop here on this side of the road, I'm gonna go back to my 13 June video, show you uh, again the left-hand side of the road. This is that old testing calibration lot and the superchargers. And of course, again, many of the cyber trucks that are being stored temporarily. Now we'll continue looking on the left-hand side of the screen for a little while. Gives you some good views of the multi-level parking garage, which has progressed a little bit more since this video, uh, but uh, it is a great uh, opportunity to see both sides of the road. As we continue to move to the south is a great view of the portable air conditioning units that we often see here on the side of the body and white structure and uh, these are of course temporary because the uh, roof mounted uh, cooling system is still under construction and that's what we see with that large open section on the uh, roof with all of the new ventilation ducting. This is also getting close to the stamping machine structure now. See that temporary loading platform and many of the receiving doors on the left-hand side of the screen. This is where some of the recycling for the stamping scraps takes place and they have some systems on the inside there to uh, collect them and then put them into some of the recycling trucks. 
And this is a good view of that temporary platform that's being used for a lot of the electrical wiring that is being run along the parapet wall the length of the building to serve the data center. Now as we get to the building extension, this is a great ground level view of those four tanks that we often see from the drone and this new cooling tower unit and a great uh, very low obviously, obviously ground level view of how this is looking and a much different perspective than what we normally see with the drone. Now in the middle between the two structures is where these large brown pipes are being installed. That's going to be for the cooling water for that supercomputer cluster. It's a great view of the glass and how this end of the building is looking with the entire wall in the glass and that uh, smaller glass parapet uh, wall on the top to give it one contiguous glass look. This is also a good uh, vantage point to see the cyber pond and how it looks from the ground level as we drive on River Road, getting ready to turn to the north and uh, we'll come back in and get some good views uh, with the caveat that the windows of the bus are quite dirty so I apologize for that but uh, this is a great uh, vantage point to see some of the workshops here with the, the uh, trucks in this rounded top uh, uh, workshop this is where the glass company crews are and where they prepare to install more of the glass also a great view of that southwest corner and that new entrance area and uh, some of the materials being brought in here on the west side in this open section where in the a drone video earlier today i was able to show you some views on the inside where this rubbish chute is in these two temporary platforms uh, that cyber truck is exiting the factory that is the current temporary exit point for the cyber trucks before they head over to the outbound lot on the west side of the highway. That's where that new boring company tunnel will come into effect that will allow the vehicles to be able to transit over to that area without having to go on the roads down underneath the south bridge and all the way over. That should help uh, cut some time off and also uh, ultimately should help with the number of employees that have to be shuttled from one side to the other as they drive the vehicles over. So. I know that uh, the employees of Giga Texas are really looking forward to that boring tunnel being online and operational as it will help greatly with their activities. So let's continue to uh, drive along the west side of General Assembly heading to the west main entrance. We've arrived over at the West Main entrance. We got the flags flying because of the Independence Day holiday coming up and a great view here of the West Main entrance from the ground. So pretty cool. All right, great view here right in front of the West Main entrance. And I 
love the reflection of the Texas and American flags in the windows behind me. And as you can uh, see, we're at that uh, West Main entrance that we normally see from the drone, but it looks a lot different uh, from the ground. And we also see a little bit of the uh, uh, stone glass uh, issues on that uh, curb. But uh, let's get ready to uh, walk in and let's see what's going on with the tour. Everybody is here now. Uh, don't worry, we will have time in the lobby back when the tour is over to get some photos. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get my song here back in Texas. Now, clearly, you can see how big this building is from the outside, but you have no clue what it looks like on the inside yet. So I'm excited for you all to see some of the factory floor today, what makes Tesla so unique. But the building itself, with that south expansion project on the south side, is almost a mile in length. It's already a quarter mile wide and close to 11 million square feet right now. So you're currently standing in the largest manufacturing center in the world by square feet specifically. Uh, so a massive space. We're making two different vehicles under this roof at the moment. We got our Model Y, which we started with back in 2022. And we have the Cybertruck, which we just added recently to our line. And we're going to get a chance to see both of those vehicles that we make here today. And we'll talk a little bit about the 4680 cell, which we also make under this roof in Giga, Texas. But welcome into the Gigafactory. Um, if you look, you'll see a couple Model Ys on display. Now, the one over to the right there is 4 million Model Y. Just so happens. in 2023. So for an electric vehicle to take that spot shows you the testament of Tesla and our breakthrough into the automotive industry. Now, of course, we've got our little baby Longhorn here to the left. So sorry, Aggies fans, but you're in Austin. And uh, she's our little mascot. She's been with us since the beginning of the build. And she'll actually make a little cameo appearance in a video that I'm going to show you all before we hit the factory floor together. And we are heading towards the tour room now. Uh, we have some cyber truck pieces on display that we'll talk real briefly about. And then we'll get the tour started. We'll hit the factory floor um, from there. Now, we will have some time in the lobby after the tour is over to take some more photos, videos, things of that nature. But from now until we uh, get back to the lobby, I'll ask that there's no photos, videos, or recording of any sort. Okay? okay. So otherwise, we'll go ahead and get started. So following that quick introduction for the larger group, uh, we went over to a smaller conference room. We watched uh, a several minute video about the history of Giga Texas to bring us up to current time. And then the larger group went into the factory uh, to tour the Model Y and the Cybertruck production lines and wasn't able to take any video or images. And I really can't pass along some of the information that they uh, provided to us. But uh, what I can tell you is that when I was with the larger group, uh, the Model Y production line included some of the body in white, uh, a little bit of the uh, general assembly areas, and also the end of line within the factory. And of course, with the Cybertruck, we saw similar areas uh, where the body came through and it uh, had uh, no uh, interior or any of the... Uh, uh, finishing parts of the Cybertruck, and then it went all the way through to uh, portions of General Assembly. And it was really great to see, very similar to uh, what uh, we were able to see during the Cybertruck delivery event back in November, and more than we've seen in uh, shareholder meetings uh, and the tours that they provide the shareholders. So it was actually very good and uh, it was a nice uh, visit uh, throughout the factory. Now, after that, I was met with uh, one of the Tesla employees, uh, Greg, who works for the uh, director of manufacturing, and uh, we got a chance to go on my own tour 
And that one was much more extensive. In fact, I could pretty much go wherever I would like to go. And uh, I was, uh, you know, escorted by Greg and we talked a lot. And in the map on the left, you can see the highlighted kind of pink area of all of the sections of Giga Texas I was able to visit. And that includes multiple floors as well. So not just the ground floor, which is where the larger tour group and where the shareholders meeting um, tours happen. But I also got a chance to go up to the second and third floors throughout quite a bit of the factory. And if you look at the map on the right, uh, you can kind of get an idea of all of the sections that I was able to visit. And some of the ones that I was particularly interested in was the casting machine structure uh, area where there's been a lot of work inside, and it was great to see all of that. I also wanted to go down to the stamping machine structure down at the southeast corner. Uh, that was an area that I have uh, never been in before. And I also remember uh, seeing a lot of the extremely early construction at Giga Texas, which took place here in the stamping machine section. And uh, a lot of the stamping machines, uh, well, they actually are mounted on something called an isolation foundation, which is a subterranean kind of concrete structure that uh, uh, the subterranean part is as large as a housing block. Uh, so you could have multiple houses underground in that area. So it's quite impressive. And I really wanted to take a look at that area. And one of the funny things is, is during our visit, uh, I actually was able to give Greg some information that he did not know about the construction of Giga Texas. And that had to do with uh, one of the early problems with a column that was being installed. Now, this entire stamping uh, machine section uh, uses the large concrete columns, and they need that because they have some large bridge cranes and bridge crane rails in that area. And in the early construction, one of the columns that they installed was actually too short. And as you can see by this image here, I'm indicating where that is located. And here's another close in view. You can see that they had actually placed a beam onto that column. But if you look at this picture, you can see that they are not level and this had to be fixed. And that was on the 18th of December, 2020. By the 20th of December, they had removed that uh, beam and they had placed it on the ground and they were preparing for a spacer to be installed. And here is that spacer installed on the 22nd of December, 2020. And then later on when they replaced the beam and they started putting the double T panels for the roof section. And that was on the 24th of December. So anyway, we went looking for that uh, column. I was unable to find that uh, just because of the locations that we were at. But uh, anyway, it was pretty cool to be able to tell uh, some of the Tesla employees a little bit of history about the factory that they did not know. And we talked a lot about the construction of Giga Texas while I was going through the entire tour. So that was really cool uh, to be able to share that information with uh, employees. All right, everybody, I've uh, finished up my tour of Giga Texas today. It was really special. I first started off with a larger group with the uh, friends and family that were being shown around by uh, some of the Tesla employees and many of the uh, Tesla employees had their family here for the 4th of July. So it was really uh, great to be able to see a lot of the interior of Giga Texas. And then afterwards, I was met up with uh, Greg, who uh, showed me around the entire factory, a lot more extensive than what you would normally see. I got a chance to see the casting machine structure, a lot of the stuff inside, the stamping machine structure, both of which are things that I really wanted to see uh, for a long time. And then, of course, we walked uh, a lot of the factory. I would say that if you're trying to get in shape, coming out and walking around Giga Texas is a way to do that because uh, it is so big. The amount of walking uh, was uh, amazing. And plus, we went up and down the stairs to different floors as well. So uh, that was uh, pretty cool to see all the operations. Now, unfortunately, I'm not able to give you any video or any images from what uh, we were able to see inside. A uh, few of my impressions, though, that I would like to just give. And one of them is just an amazing team of people that they have working here 
uh, across the board, uh, uh, just you know, from the basic uh, body and white, putting the vehicles together, making the stamping uh, parts, uh, what's going on in casting, uh, just all the way through the general assembly and end of line. It's just been amazing to see the amount of work that's going on. You know, a lot of the factory is automated. We saw that during the Cybertruck delivery event. And just a plug for my video that uh, I released about the Cybertruck production line. So you get a lot of good interior views with that video, so you can check it out. And we saw some of that uh, same area, but we also saw some additional uh, areas as well. And, uh, you know, another impression that I got from the tour is as much that is going on at Giga Texas that we see as far as filling in the building with equipment and machinery and using it for operations, there is still a lot of Giga Texas that is ready for expansion into the future. So as far as space is concerned, they're really not lacking any of the space that uh, you might think at this stage of the game. So Giga Texas, I expect to continue to be building out and growing with its uh, capacity and the ability for production. Uh, you know, another couple of uh, things uh, impression wise is that uh, it's just amazing the processes that they use here at uh, Giga Texas with coming up with new ideas. Every employee is empowered to uh, you know, bring to the table some ideas that they may have. It may make a process better. It may make the product better. Uh, and they're encouraged to do so. And there's various different videos that they have set up and processes that, that they can put into place to test out those ideas that uh, the employees would have. And then if they do work out, then they can incorporate them right away into the production line. So pretty cool to see that culture that they have here and that encouragement for any employee to uh, bring up new ideas. Now, you know, there's a lot of other great things that are coming into the future for Giga Texas, many of which I will be able to see from the outside flying the drone in the future. And, uh, you know, we can point those out when they do materialize, but uh, there is a lot in store for Giga Texas coming up in the foreseeable future. And uh, most of which I can show you with the drone, some of which I can't, but uh, needless to say, I think that we are in very good hands with the people that are running Giga Texas, what they have in mind, what that means for Tesla overall and the future of the company. So uh, again, I just want to say thank you very much to Jason, to Greg, many of the employees that uh, helped give me a tour today. Uh, brought me out and showed me Giga Texas in a way that I have not seen before. I very much appreciate that opportunity and uh, the trust that uh, Tesla has had in me to continue to cover Giga Texas. So thank you very much. It uh, is definitely a special 4th of July uh, gift and uh, I very much appreciate that. So anyway, uh, we've got a whole drone video for today in addition to some of the ground shots that I took uh, for uh, this video of getting over towards the factory, driving around the south end, and I think you're going to like those images as well. So as always, thank you very much for your support. I do appreciate that. And again, thank you very much for Tesla for having me out for the day. Take care.